Good morning, Kids Church. It's Miss Amy. Today we're going to be talking about the three little pigs and how they relate to a parable that Jesus told in the Gospel of Matthew. But today is crazy hat day. So I invite you to get your crazy hat out and wear it with me all during today's Kids Church. Here's mine. I have a Star Wars Mickey ears. We are so excited for Disneyland to be reopened soon. So as we go through our Kids Church Day, you're gonna need to have your Bible. This one's mine that I'm gonna be using. You're gonna also need to have your craft supplies a little later in today's um, lesson. But if you don't have your craft supplies together yet, that's okay. We can do craft um, another time after this video is over. But if you would like to do craft at the same time I'm doing it, you'll need to have some paint. These look kind of silly, but they're paint markers. You're gonna need uh, some rocks. And then if you have it, you're gonna need some um, sealer spray. And this is for grown up use only. But if you um, have it, make sure you have it ready so the grown ups in your house can help you use it. So like I said, today we're gonna to be talking about the three little pigs. It's one of my favorite fairy tales and it relates to the wise and foolish builder, the story that Jesus tells in the Gospel of Matthew and Luke. Now, the three little pigs, there are so many versions of that story. There are some where the big bad wolf tells it from his point of view. This is one of my favorites, it's where the three little pigs fall out of the story and then they go visit other fairy tales. But the one that we're gonna be reading today is just the regular plain original fairy tale of the three little pigs. So as we go through our kids day, let's be reminded that we as Christians follow three simple rules for living. And let's repeat after me. The three simple rules are do no harm, do good, and love and honor God. So we do no harm to ourselves, to others, and to the environment. We do good to ourselves, to others, and the environment. And we love and honor God by doing these two things and by taking communion, going to church, tithing and giving our talents and our treasures and our prayers to all of those in God's community. So we follow these three simple rules. Today we're going to be, like I said, we're going to be going through the wise and foolish builder and that parable is told in the Gospel of Matthew, the first book of the New Testament, and the Gospel of Luke. Now let's be reminded there are four Gospels in the Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So let's open with today's opening prayer. It's time now for our opening prayer, the Johnny Appleseed song. So have your big singing voices and follow me as we sing this prayer together. Oh, the Lord's been good to me, and so I thank the Lord. For giving me the things I need Like the sun and the rain and the apple seed The Lord's been good to me Amen, 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 amen Here's the story of the three little pigs One day a mother pig told her three little pigs It was time for them to go out into the world And make their own way the first little pig met a man with a bundle of straw. The pig bought some straw to build a house. Soon, a wolf knocked at his door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. Not by the hair on my chinny chin chin, squealed the pig inside his straw house. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. Then the wolf huffed and he puffed and he blew the first little pig's house away. He blew so hard 
that he even blew the little pig away. The second little pig bought sticks from the same man. Then he built his house with the sticks. It was not long before the wolf came along. He knocked on the door, saying, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. Not by the hair on my chinny chin chin, said the second little pig. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, threatened the wolf. The wolf huffed and puffed and blew the house in. He blew so hard that he blew it away and he also blew the second pig away too. The third little pig met the same man. This pig bought a load of bricks. He built a very sturdy house. Soon the wolf was pounding on his door, just like he did the first two pigs. The wolf growled and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. Not by the hair on my chinny chin chin, squealed the third little pig. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, roared the wolf. The wolf huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed some more. But he could not blow that little pig's house in. The wolf made up his mind to have the third pig for dinner. He thought up a plan. Little pig, he said, I know where there's a nice field of turnips. Where? The little pig asked. At Farmer Brown's, he said. I'll take you there at six o'clock tomorrow morning. The little pig agreed, but he was too smart for the wolf. He got up at five o'clock in the morning, got the turnips, and was back in his house when the wolf arrived at six. Little pig, are you ready? He asked. Ready? scoffed the pig. I've been ready and come back with lots of turnips. The wolf was very angry that he had been tricked. He was so tired that he decided to try to trick the pig again. Little pig, he said sweetly, I know where there is a tree full of juicy apples. Where, said the pig, in Granny Smith's garden said the wolf. I'll come for you tomorrow at five o'clock in the morning. We will go together. The little pig woke up at four o'clock and went off to find the apples. The wolf also got up at four o'clock, but the pig was not home. The wolf went to the apple tree. The little pig was just about to come down from the tree with some apples when he saw the wolf below. The little pig was frightened. The wolf came close and called up the tree. My, you're up early, said the wolf. How are the apples? The pig thought of a plan quickly. Delicious, he said. Why don't you stand back and I'll throw one down to you. So the wolf took a few steps back. The little pig tossed the apple as far as he could. He threw the apple so far that he was able to scoot down the tree and run away. The little pig was safely home before the wolf found the apple he had thrown. Back at his little brick house, the pig made applesauce and apple pie, and he still had plenty of apples left to eat. He was a smart little pig. In the meantime, the wolf was furious that he had been tricked again. He thought he was trickier than any little pig, and this little pig had tricked him too many times already. So he thought and he thought until he came up with another plan. The next day, the wolf went over to little pig's house and said, Little pig, there's a fair in town tomorrow. Let's go together. I'll come by and get you at three o'clock. The little pig agreed, and you will not be surprised that the clever little pig started out early for the fair. 
He enjoyed all the sights and sounds of the fair, but he did not stay too long. The little pig wanted to get home before the wolf showed up at the fair. The little pig was on his way home when a, with a big barrel he had bought at the fair when he saw the wolf coming up the hill toward him. The tricky little pig crawled into the barrel to hide. When he did, the barrel started to roll down the hill. The barrel rolled and rolled over and over, gathering speed on the way down the hill. The barrel with the little pig inside headed straight for the wolf. This frightened the wolf so much that the wolf ran home. The wolf went to the little pig's house the next day. Little pig, he said, I was going to meet you at the fair when all at once the most frightening thing came rolling down the hill. I ran straight home. The little pig laughed. Ha ha! I was that frightened. I was the one that frightened you. I was in the barrel. The wolf was very angry when he learned that the little pig had frightened him with the barrel. He made up his mind right then and there that he would eat the little pig for dinner that very night. Little pig, roared the wolf, I'm going to eat you for dinner today. I may have not been able to blow your house in, and I may not have been able to trick you, but I'm going to come down the chimney to get you now. With that, the wolf leaped up on the roof. Here I come, little pig, he snarled down into the chimney. But that smart little pig had hung a pot full of water over the fire. The wolf tumbled down the chimney right into the big pot of boiling water. The pig quickly put a heavy lid on the pot and that was the end of the wolf. The little pig lived happily ever after. In the story of the three little pigs, we're reminded that we need to build a house on a strong foundation and be a wise builder. Not just for building houses, but we need to be wise builders when building friendships, when building love, and when building kindness. Psalm 127 reminds us that we need to be wise builders and to always have the Lord help us when building. So get your singing voices out and let's sing together this song, Unless. Unless the Lord builds the house, builds the house, builds the house. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builder builds in vain. Now vain is just another word for saying not good. So that last part, the builder builds in vain or the builder builds on sand. You remember the story of the wise and foolish builder? So the builder builds in vain or the builder doesn't build very good at all. Let's sing that a couple of more times. I love when we can sing God's praises together. Here we go. Unless the Lord builds the house, builds the house, builds the house. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builder builds in vain. Unless the Lord builds the house, builds the house, builds the house. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builder builds in vain. And one more time before we turn off our singing part of this lesson. Unless the Lord builds the house, builds the house, builds the house. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builder builds in vain. Great singing voices, everyone. It's that time in our Kids Church Day for our Bible lesson. So go ahead and get your Bible out 
And let's turn to the Gospel of Matthew. It's found in the first book of the New Testament, chapter 7. Look for the big 7. And then we're going to switch on over to verse 24. So Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. You could also look for the header, the wise and foolish builder. You need to pause the video, go ahead. Okay, so the wise and foolish builder is a story that Jesus tells about two types of people. Now, we often refer to stories that Jesus tells as a parable. A parable is just a story with a meaning. So let's see, and when I read this story to us, if we can find the meaning of this story and how it relates to the three little pigs, okay? Here's the word of the Lord. So then, everyone who hears my words and puts them into practice is like a wise man. He builds his house on the rock. The rain comes down, the water rises, the winds blow and beat against that house, but it does not fall. It is built on the rock. But everyone who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man. He builds his house on sand. The rain comes down, the water rises, the wind blows and beat against that house, and it falls with a loud crash. Jesus finished saying all of these things. The crowds were amazed at his teaching. He taught like one who had authority. He did not speak like their teachers of the law. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Thanks be to God. So how do we see in the parable of the wise and foolish builders that it's the same or similar to the three little pigs? Well, God says that we need to build our house on the rock. And the third little pig built his house using, not rock, but brick, really strong brick. And then Jesus says, says in this parable that a foolish person builds their house on sand, kind of like the first and second pig how they built their house using not so strong materials like straw and sticks. Now remember, sand, like beach sand, is very soft. If there's no firm foundation to it, unlike a rock. So we thank God for helping us to always be a wise builder and for always using the rock to build things upon. Today's craft, we're going to be doing one of my favorite things to do, and that's painting some rocks. So what you're going to need is some plain rocks. Usually the smoothest rock is the best. This one has a rough back, so that's why I did the front, because it's pretty smooth. You're also going to need some paint. I always use these paint markers. They draw on like crayons, but if you don't have paint markers, you could use just regular paint with a paintbrush. You could use permanent marker, and, or if you don't even have rocks, you could just use a piece of paper. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our plain rock, and then we're gonna make sure it's clean. If you just got it from outside, scrub off all that dirt. Dirt doesn't go very well with paint. And we're gonna paint a house. Now, we do this because we're gonna use this craft to remind us that the Bible tells us we need to build a foundation on rock. And this is exactly what it is, it's a rock. And so you're gonna take your paint marker or your paint or your paintbrush and go ahead and lay down uh, paint to make your house. I put down green first and then I drew some triangles and squares and a rectangle for the windows and doors. I painted on a little bit of bushes at the front door. And then uh, once you have this all dry, you're gonna get some kind of sealer. I have this Mod Podge sealer that I got from Walmart. It's just like a little spray bottle, but make sure you ask a grown up first to help you with this sealer part 
because you don't want to accidentally spray this in your face or anywhere else. I always spray this outside. So make sure a grown up helps you with that sealant part. The reason why we seal and we spray that sealer onto our painted rocks is because in the hot desert outside, when our rocks are outside, the paint starts to peel away and melt and get all gross from the sun. But if we have a sealer on it, it helps protect the rock much better. All right, so that's today's craft. You can pause the video and start working on your painted rocks, or you can work on painted rocks after our kids' church is done, okay? Now, we have two more things to go before we finish our kids' church day. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on a way to serve our community through a service project. And so one way that we can do that is by prayers. We can do prayers in a lot of different ways, but one way we're gonna do it today is by blowing bubbles. I'm sure a lot of you have bubbles at your house or you could go pick some up at the dollar store. And so how you do a bubble prayer is you just think about something that you wanna pray for in your heart, like your family or your friends or your school teachers or your church, or maybe there's someone in particular that you wanna pray for. And then you use that prayer to blow bubbles. So for instance, you could say, dear God, please be with my family. And then you take some bubbles and you blow them and then you watch those you watch those bubbles go up and up and up just like your prayers go up and up and up as we say them you could do it again you could say thank you god for my friends and then you blow some more bubbles and then you watch those bubbles go up and up and up to the heavens. So this is a service project that we can do by praying for other people. And then we could do it by watching those bubbles or those prayers going up and up and up after we speak them with our mouths. So that's our service project for this week. I hope you're able to remember the bubble prayer. As we close for today's Kids Church, we're gonna close by saying the Lord's Prayer. Remember, this is found in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 6, and Jesus was the one that taught us to say this prayer together. So, as we close, let's all say our closing prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I bid you peace as you go on your week this day. Thanks for joining me for Kids Church during Crazy Hat Day. And as we learn more about the three little pigs and how that relates to the wise and foolish builder. Until next time, make sure you're doing no harm, doing good, and love and honoring God.